David here, Mixed Bus TV NAM 2020. I'm here with Ronan, Eve Audio. How are you doing, man? I'm great. Thank you very much. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. NAM is always good. It's a pleasure to be here with you again. Yeah. And how's it going for you? It's a great show and we enjoy it very much and um, yeah, we have to show something new. Oh yeah, definitely. We are here because we definitely have something new to show. So we can walk over there because I could not not notice the new model, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is just a brilliant design just to look at it. But I will let you talk about it. Uh, the SC3070. As you can see, it's a three-way model what we have here. Tweeter, mid-range unit and uh, a woofer driver. And I felt a gap between these um, SC2307 uh, and these 407s. Right. And I wanted to have a smaller speaker, very compact, but with a dedicated mid-range unit. Right. And if you uh, want to do some records, um, it mid-range is a very important area for voicing and so and Arguably the most important, yeah. yeah. And then it was, uh, yeah, it showed up to have a need for that. Uh, the speaker is how many inches? Um, yeah, the woofer has, is a 7 inch or 6.5 inch. Inch, okay. inch woofer, uh, 4 inch mid-range unit and the air motion transformer with a folded yeah. uh, diaphragm. Absolutely. How many watts are we talking about? Um, the base amplifier has 185 watts. Okay. Uh, 100 watts and the tweeter also has 100 watt hour, but of course um, it is uh, protected by limiters. Right, right, of course. So what's the benefit of having this kind of configuration as opposed to, let's say, the classic vertical one? Why yeah. did you go for this? Yeah, the problem with this um, speaker is if you have a horizontal uh, alignment right. of this driver, then the sound source between the high frequencies and the mid frequencies is moving in this direction. Yeah, right. Mid Range is coming from this uh, mid-range driver. High frequency is coming from the tweeter, of course. So, and if you have a moving um, sound uh, center, uh, depending from the frequency in a horizontal um, uh, orientation, then it's not so good for stereo image. Right. And always the better thing is to have the tweeter and the mid-range located aligned, aligned vertically. vertically. Yeah. yeah. So and for for the woofer, it's uh, not so important this effect because the wavelength is uh, far away from. Of course. That having and that is that. not as directional as the mid-range and the high yes, frequency, yes. right? And just to make uh, just to make just to be clear, this is a, a quote-unquote problem that all the horizontal monitors yes, have, not just yes, you know yes, the, yes. The, this one in yes. particular, like and the horizontal yes. configuration in general. And to understand the functionality of uh, these uh, speakers, 307 or uh, SC305, what we have, it is like a two-way system lay lay on the side. Right. There's an additional subwoofer driver. Right, yeah, right. So exactly. That, uh, exactly. It's no, not a dedicated mid-range uh, unit. Absolutely. Yeah. I tried other monitors with a similar configuration, and I love them be just because what you just said yes. for the for the vertical alignment of mm -hmm. mid-range and the woofer on the side is perfect to sit either on a desk or on a console. So yeah. they have like I don't know. I, I just like them. I like how they sound. I like how this configuration sounds. That's good. So um, these also have the same. Uh, functions yes and yes. DSP that all the other models have the mine have yes, yes. right so inside uh, the DSP is working okay and the DSP makes also this kind of user interface possible so what we can do from the, uh, the front knob we can uh, change the volume of course right and we can also um, change the um, shelving filter, low shelf, high shelf, we have a mid EQ and we have also a desk EQ. The desk EQ, yeah. So I'm very familiar because mine are yes, exactly yes. the same. So, and um, if you do some settings here immediately it is audible so it is right uh, th th there's no enter button needed no uh, software whatever no update so it's, uh, the behavior is just like a normal analog studio monitor what right. I wanted to have so, so you can disconnect um, the speaker in every case from the main so you can use your main power switch uh, in a, a studio yeah yeah and if you have a normal studio monitor you have the effect if you switch it on then immediately uh, the sound is 
thought of it. Right. What we did here, and uh, when we switch off the speaker, you see, of course, no lights in the front. And if I switch it on again, then you see um, the absolutely. volume. The volume increases slowly, so you can jump to your master fader if there is a loud signal. Um, absolutely. On, and you will not destroy your ears or the speaker. Yeah. And uh, for me, it's like I, I'm experienced because uh, I have the monitors hooked up on a power strip that I can switch on and yeah. every time. Like I'm, I, ha I never think about it because it's always safe. It doesn't matter yeah, what yeah. happens. You know, you can see the volume rising up, and it's so safe. It's yeah, just a yeah. safe start. We put the basal flex port on the back side. For my opinion, it has some advantages because you don't have these audible parts of port noise in the front. And also, um, uh, a port is a connection to the backside of a diaphragm of the woofer. Right. And this causes some problems also in the mid-range. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, like, I, again, I have, I'm lucky enough to have the 3012s, which is the biggest model, but I have never heard a pair of monitors going that low, that easy. Yeah, it's like yeah. so clean and tight, the low end. And I feel like, and just, so, just me guessing, you tell me, that the port you have on the rear, it does have an effect on this. Like yeah, the yeah. low end that even audio monitors have, it's one of a kind. It's so clean and tight. Yeah. And it's so true. Like your mix is translate when you go yeah, up. Yeah. You know? Now what what I really don't like if the bass is overtuned. Right. Of course you can you can put a lot of EQs in, uh, in the adjustment and then you can get some hertz lower, but it makes no sense. You have right. these kind of unpunchy um, boomy bass, very slow reacting, right. not not precise, and that's what I hate. Yeah. So, are these available right now? And what's the price? Um, they are. They will be available in summer and. Uh, the price is around uh, 2,000, 2,100 euros, uh, dollars per, per piece. Four pair. Yes, four, so per piece. four piece. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, Ronan, so much. Thank you very much for this stopping by. This was Eve Audio NAM 2020, and we're out.